Hey folks, so a couple of months ago I was playing around with the idea of fluvial erosion, which is when water and rain wears away at a landscape and is quite important for terrain texturing just more generally. So I thought I'd take a look at how we might set that up in Houdini 21 and we can take a look at whether we can do it with the flow block. So to get started, we're going to need a terrain and I'm just going to use this one just here, Terrain Valley. That's going to be a good use case for us because it has some flow coming down from the left side and from the right side. I'm going to get rid of the height field to visualize here. I'll just put down a null, which we can call two cups. So if we middle mouse on our null, we can see that we have a few different volumes going on. So we've got height and mask and we've got a few other ones and these are generated by the height filter road now, which we can use inside in COPS. So I'm going to put down a COP network. Now to load in our height fields, we it's a bit more straightforward than it used to be. We can put down a slop import here, point it towards our height fields. So our null just here. And we have to turn it from geometry into pixels. So the node that we need to use is geo to layer and that should transform it over into pixels for us. So they've put in this handy little button so we don't have to hook up all the different volumes by hand now. We can just say import from the terrain and you can see here are all of my different volumes. So I can put down a height field visualize node here and I can plug my checkerboard into my color and my height into my height. Now that doesn't do exactly what I expect and that is because my terrain is actually really large. That's what's Minus 500 units that way, 500 units this way. So it's quite big. And by default, my cop is about two units wide. They're not the same size, so Houdini doesn't know how to mix them together. So I could, in theory, put down a transform 3D node. And I could scale this thing up and uh, rotate it minus 90 degrees in X. And that would get it to line up to the same size. And then the, the blending here would work. But the slightly quicker way to do it in this case is to go transform into size ref. That makes my checkerboard the same size as my terrain. And now when I go look at my height field and visualize, I should be able to see my checkerboard on top of my terrain. So I might just set this up to 64 by 64 here, just so we get a better feel for the texture across this large scale. To get our test texture to flow across our terrain now, what we can do is put down a channel join down here like this. And we have flow direction here and we have flow X and flow Y. Now they're all empty at the moment and that's because we haven't done any erosion. So this is the information coming through as the erosion node starts to erode the terrain. So the flow here is um, all of the particles basically that are running over the, the gradient of the terrain and rolling downhill. This is them in the X direction and this is them in the Y direction. So having X and Y here is very handy because we can plug X into our red and we can plug Y into our green. So this is the flow directions put into our U and V channels. Now in the previous video that I put out, I talked about trying to control our flow. And in this case, we can use this very rich texture information here to try and control the flow of our texture, our checkerboard texture over the surface. So I can plug this into a distort to check it out. And now I am going to need to change it from RGBA here over to UV. And just to let Houdini know what kind of data type we're using. So I can put down the distort and the distort and flow block are very similar in many ways. Uh, it's looking for some direction to distort things in. And I've got some directions here, U and V. And it's looking for a source image. That's my checkerboard. Now I'm going to go and plug this guy into my color. Let's go take a look. And I can control the amount of distortion with my scale. It's starting to flow down the hill here. And if we look over the other side of the valley, it is also flowing down the hill over there. So it's not going in one direction to the left or to the right. It is flowing down the hill in both cases. So as a proof of concept, that is starting to work. I know often you would blur it off a little bit here and you can play around with the scale by time step. If you do play, if you do turn this on, you start using bigger numbers and you get a little bit more of a blurry result as it runs down, which can be quite good for fluvial uh, texturing or fluvial erosion. Once I got that working, the next question was, well, okay, can we put that into a flow block? So let's give that a go. So 
we'll put down flow block here and our flow block is looking for a source image so let's plug in our checkerboard texture here and it is looking for v for velocities so let's put this back to frame one and we'll plug this guy into v and let's go from color into color over on our high field and let's try this and play so it's a little tricky to tell if our flow block is working because our erosion is also happening at the same time so let's jump back up to sops we'll go to our height field road node here and let's run out a few frames and then we'll just freeze it so it'll treat it like a model so i'm going to freeze it here at frame five and we can jump back in and there we go now we have our flow block moving our texture with some velocities off our terrain now the flow block is moving very quickly so let's take the time scale here put it down to 0 0.1 and we can press play again and we can definitely see yeah we're getting some stuff flowing down the hills here and over here so it's definitely starting to work for us and then we've got our basic proof of concept working i'd like to swap out my checkerboard and by default when we bring in the height we want the raw height values so that we can plug it into our height feed visualize here and it'll turn out to be the same height right so it'll turn out to be the same size so that means those numbers are quite large they're going from maybe minus 100 to plus 500 or something like that so when we're using height within our compositing networks we need to normalize it and you're going to use an equalize node to do that so this will take the height values and put them between zero and one and that means it should play nice now with the rest of our compositing nodes i'm going to get rid of the checkerboard here for a second uh, with my equalize i'm going to plug it into a mono to rgb and then i can go and put a quick ramp in here and we can plug this into color and now that's running out to my height to visualize so the best way i've found to get detailed textures is to use uh, images off the net in this case i'm going to use this particular image here because it's got a good range of colors in it and um, now you will need labs installed for this but you can go sample screen colors and you want to drag relatively quickly. If you drag slowly here, you can end up with an awful lot of stops, which can get a little difficult to manage. And now what you'll find is that you'll want to build up a little library of these. Uh, I initially thought I would be saving it under recipes here, but it seems what's worked best for me is to save it up here. Uh, so you'll save a node preset. Uh, I'm just going to ignore that error and we're going to call it terrain we'll say uh, orange and um, so to dark purple and you can save it here and then i can kill this little error thing and if i go look here yeah there we go so you'd start to build up a, a little terrain swatch library of these over time so in my case i'm going to use this one that i have from earlier which is this guy let's go and take a look and see what that looks like with our uh, our fluid flowing over it now it, it's breaking up in quite a fluid like motion i quite like the motion right at the start but it starts to come apart relatively quickly and starts to feel very fluid like past a certain point i'd like to get smaller bits of breakup throughout my fluids to get that smaller breakup i'm going to need some more interesting velocities uh, so i'm going to use some noise so i'll put down some fractal noise now I'm going to need it to be the same size as my terrain. So I'll plug my height in here just to my size ref. And here is my very large noise now. Uh, I'm going to start by turning up the amplitude a little bit. And I might dial up the roughness just a little bit as well. Now it's a little bit tricky to see at this scale. I'm going to change it from mono over to UV. There we go. So I can see it a little easier. Uh, and I want it sort of stretched in one direction but quite small. So I'm going to open up the element scale here and maybe we'll go 30 in one direction here, but we'll go like 005 or something like that because it is a large terrain. So we should get lots of smaller detail uh, moving through it. Uh, so I'm going to try blending the two of those together. But with my flow in the background, I don't have an alpha in here. So my blend should just wipe over and back. There's my flow and there's my noise. Uh, let's try that out now. We'll plug it into V here. And I'll leave the flow on completely for one second. We'll press play here. So there's my flow and I'm getting my larger shapes, some of which are lovely. And now I'm going to try and dial this over to just my noise. And in my noise, I will turn up the roughness a little bit here. And I'll turn up the contrast just a small little bit as well. And maybe the amplitude. Uh, so I should have lots of different velocities going on in there now and i am starting to get some break up there now if i want to test out exactly what's happening with it i could go back to my distortion over here 
because sometimes uh, working with simulations can take up too much time. So I can go back and look at my distortion. We'll go from my mono there. Yeah. And this is working completely off my noise now. We should get a somewhat similar result, but I don't have to worry about time. So I can go back and start playing with my noise. And I'm going to pull my element scale down here just to make it smaller overall. And I'm starting to get more break up there. Uh, so it's going to be quite small in one direction. And maybe I'll pull this down as well. Uh, in the other direction. Yes, yeah, so we're starting to get some smaller break up now, which is what I wanted. Let's try running that back from our fluid here. So I've got this smaller break up now, but it doesn't have the correct direction. It's just drifting across the terrain. Uh, and I can start blending back in my fluid now which should start to drive it into the right direction. So now I'm getting much smaller breakup than before. So I'm getting some nice little breakup now across the surface. Another element I can add into my uh, fluid simulation to get some interesting results is I can add in a collision. Now I'm generating lots of interesting maps out on my terrain. Uh, so let's go and take a look at those. I'd like to be able to see these on the terrain. What I'm going to do is I'll grab my height, height field visualize at the end here. And I'll leave height plugged in, but I'm going to plug in debris and see what I get. So that is the uh, debris layer. I could use that one. Uh, we can give it a try. The problem is it looks like it's in a lot of the same places as the flow. Uh, so let's try the next one here sediment so that looks better it's down at the bottom of the valley so i'm going to try that one out as your network gets a little busier uh, what i found is it can be quite useful to use fetch nodes if i plug the sediment in directly into my collision right at the moment uh, my flow block will encapsulate all of this which is fine but it just starts to get a little bit messy as the node network starts to get busier uh, so what i found that i like to do instead is this i will put down a null and I will call that null S for sediment. Go from sediment in here. Now, if you want to give your uh, nulls uh, kind of custom colors, what you can do is you can right click here and say add color, and you can go and pick a custom color that you would like to use. This teeny kind of color, and I will click okay here. And now I can just use that by dragging and dropping it on there. Uh, I'll put down a fetch. I'll use the same color for my fetch. And let's put my uh, sediment in there. Now I will need to tell it to type. Uh, Cops is picky about that kind of stuff. So I'll put that over to mono. Now I can go and hook my fetch up here for my collision. This. And let's go and take a look at the end results. Uh, to make it easier to see whether my uh, collision is working or not, what I'm going to do is add a blend here. And I'll plug color into the background. I can plug my fetch sediment here into my foreground. And let's plug that into color. And I can go and just add those together. And the black won't show up now. You can hit play here and we'll see that my fluid now is coming down. And it w it will hit off the uh, collision here and then flow around it, right? So again, maybe if I speed up the simulation, we might be able to see it a little quicker. And it comes down and it starts to flow around the shapes, right? So you can see it's starting to flow down into that space there. Okay, so that can all help to give are more interesting shapes overall that feel like they're kind of following the curvature or following the the shape of the terrain one more interesting little thing that i found that i can do is i can use the flow itself here and i can blend it in with the height value so this is the height that's going all the way to the end we put height into the background here and we can put flow into our foreground and i can just subtract one from the other. So now I'm subtracting the flow. It's very similar to what the flow map node is doing out in terrains anyway. I'm controlling the flow of the texture here and I'm controlling the flow of the terrain just here. So those two things can start to work in tandem together. So you can start to get a real feel that some of these colors are starting to move over that terrain. I hope you find that useful when you're creating your own terrain textures and I will see you in the next video.